Welcome to another edition of Self-Defense Across America. Five Knoxville police now releasing the name of the victim in a shooting that happened over the weekend. KPD confirming the victim was 32-year-old Knoxville resident Matthew Walker. We're told this is after officers were called to a home in the 2700 block of Linden Avenue Saturday morning at around 8. When they got there, they tried to perform CPR on Walker, but he was pronounced dead at the scene. Based on the investigation, police tell us that Walker was engaged in a domestic dispute with family members when he pulled a gun. Then they say Walker was shot by another family member at the home. We're told the people involved have all been interviewed by KPD homicide unit detectives. As of right now, no charges have been filed. The investigation remains ongoing. We've got a breaking update. Memphis police say a man was shot at a BP gas station on East Shelby Drive as he tried to defend himself from a robbery. This is that shooting that we have been telling you about on Shelby Drive, and this scene is a few blocks down at Shelby Drive and Hickory Hill Road. But again, Memphis police saying that they responded to an aggravated assault after 930 last night. Fox 13 learned the victim was leaving that store when a robber pointed a pistol in his face demanding his car keys. And that's when police say the victim fired his own gun, shot at the suspect, and the robber fired back. Okay, so there was a shootout. Apparently, 25 shots fired. The victim was hit in his behind. Police and the shooter and another man took off, said the shoot in, in a gray older model Chevy Impala. Okay. So again, we had a shootout after an attempted carjacking at a, at a gas station convenience store on Shelby Drive. Happened last night around 930. So the victim was shot. He, you know, the shootout happened when he fired back. What a mess. We're glad it wasn't any worse. But if you know any more about who did it, call Memphis Police or Crime Stoppers. Thursday afternoon in an unrelated incident, Portsmouth police say an employee at the Essex food store shot and killed a man who was stealing items. No one at the store wanted to talk Friday. Portsmouth Police Chief Stephen Jenkins released a statement saying in part, it is unfortunate that violence continues to afflict communities nationwide, even during festive occasions like the 4th of July, and Portsmouth is no exception. All I'd heard like a pop. Back at the scene of Thursday night shooting Friday, Kevin Prevett says he was outside of the popular hotel nearby when the shooting happened. He didn't immediately panic. Um, it's unfortunate that you know these kind of incidents happen in you know cities that are bigger. As of Friday, both shootings remained under investigation. If you have any information about this crime, contact the Portsmouth Police Department. You can find contact information in this story on our website, WTKR.com. In Portsmouth, Colter Einstadt, News 3. As thousands came together to watch fireworks and celebrate the 4th of July at Steel Indian School Park, red and blue police lights took over nearby streets after a deadly self-defense shooting. But to do lie, they have fun and everything. Maybe a day to have fun, but not see people get hurt. Detectives say this is unrelated to the fabulous Phoenix 4th gathering and happened during what neighbors say was a pro-Palestinian protest outside the event. I was in the park watching the fireworks and then because the fireworks was a little bit delayed and when we came back, it was a lot of police cars and stuff and we didn't know what happened. Around 845 Thursday night, officers responded to the scene near Central and Camelback after reports of a verbal fight turning violent. That's when they found a 51 year old man who was shot and killed and another man who was stabbed. The stabbing victim is expected to be OK. I felt bad for him. I felt sad. A woman was taken into custody for questioning, but she was released after claiming she was protecting herself at the protest. Detectives will continue to work the case and decide if she will face any charges after the investigation is complete. I live by here, so nothing like this ever happened. This is the first time I've seen something like this. No word on who the shooting and stabbing victims are or how they may be connected to the protest. 
We also don't know if police have any suspects for the stabbing. We'll be sure to keep you posted as we learn more. State police crime scene experts spent half the day going over the Mingo County shooting scene outside a house along West Virginia Highway 65. A shooting was reported in the Lenore area about 515 on Friday morning. Troopers arrived to find 42-year-old Charles Spear of Kermit, West Virginia, shot multiple times. Uh, there was an altercation at this residence, and uh, one of the, the, the victim was transported to ARH Hospital, where they were pronounced deceased. Troopers say Spear was shot and killed by 50-year-old David Hodge, who lived in the house. While troopers say the investigation has been discussed with the Mingo County prosecutor, at least at this point, there are no charges against Hodge. Troopers say Spear traveled to the house and confronted Hodge. It appears there were no other witnesses to the actual shooting than the two men. Troopers indicated the two men knew each other but did not elaborate. The probe into this shooting is continuing. In Mingo County, Bob Aaron, Eyewitness News. Two people remain on the run tonight after police say they shot at a Miami-Dade home, injuring one man, then taking off on a jet ski. And tonight, neighbors are once again bringing up concerns over large parties being held at the house where that shooting happened. NBC6 anchor Chris Hush is live in Golden Glades. And Chris, this isn't the first shooting at this home, isn't it? Right, Jackie, just more than two years ago, we covered a shooting, a deadly shooting at the same location here. And just like that shooting at the time, Yesterday's incident happened during a house party. Neighbors here, as we said, want them to end. Every Sunday, they have big parties, you know, like cars are online all over. Neighbors expressing their concerns as Miami-Dade police detectives go door to door looking for any clues into Sunday shooting at this home in Golden Glades. One man was shot Sunday night during a large house party near South River Drive and 151st Street. According to investigators, there was an argument which led to an exchange of gunfire between party guests and two people who were on a jet ski in the canal behind the home. It's kind of dangerous because even kids, they're doing like, um, when they're riding their bikes, you know, and then they're doing dangerous tricks and then in front of cars and everything. In April 2022, we have no problem. The former owner of the home spoke to NBC6 after a shooting during a house party killed a man and injured three others. The circumstances similar to Sunday's incident. Because we wouldn't have a party if people just came by and he was jet skiing. At the time, neighbors told us they had filed multiple complaints with code enforcement. NBC6 found these court documents showing the home was foreclosed on last October and sold to a new owner. However, the Miami-Dade Police Department tells us the eviction hasn't been executed due to pending litigation. Calls to the owner weren't returned. And the man who was shot during this incident yesterday is stable at a nearby hospital, according to police. Meanwhile, anyone with information about the shooting or the whereabouts of where these two individuals who got away on a jet ski are should call Miami-Dade Crime Stoppers. Live in Golden Glades, I'm Chris Hosh, NBC6 News. Valley Village, where a homeowner fired his weapon at attempted burglars. Gil Avis is over the scene at Sky 5 with more on the investigation. Gil. Mike and Sherry, you're looking at the house. This is on the 11,600 block of Addison Street where that shooting took place just after 3 o'clock this afternoon. As I zoom in, you see a police car there in the driveway, officers there in the walkway, crime scene tape at the door, and evidence markers there on the ground. Now, in the back of that home, there is some more uh, crime scene tape there, but it was a sh they responded to a shooting call here just after 3 o'clock this afternoon. They found one person, a 25-year-old male, suffering from a gunshot wound at that house. That person was transported to a local hospital. We understand that person was shot by the homeowner. They are, are looking for an additional, at least one suspect in the area. There's a four-block perimeter set up here. There's a search underway on all these streets here, a uh, canine search uh, on each street. There's about four of them here. This is going to be Hudson Street. You can see the uh, canine officers, the search teams there on that street. They're going house by house looking for that additional suspect in this shooting, but again, uh, it looked like a burglary suspects that were uh, trying to break into a home. One of them got shot here and transported to a local hospital. That person's condition unknown, and they are still searching for that at least one suspect outstanding. That's the latest overhead up in Sky 5. I'll send it back to you in the studio.